This is the LG V50 ThinQ 5G, a flagship phone from 2019. And I'm gonna tell you what are the things that makes this device still worth buying in 2022 and what are some of the things which could be a deal breaker for you if you were thinking to buy it. So let's get started. First of all, I guess design wise this is one of the beautiful phones made by LG. On the front it has a notch but it doesn't look that bad like some of the other phones do look. In fact, when you use it without a case, it sometimes looks like an iPhone, if that is the compliment you would like to hear, thanks to its shiny aluminum frame and such a great display panel. LG V50 has total of 5 cameras and yes, all of these are actual sensors and are not like the dummy holes of some of the cheaper phones. There are 3 cameras on the back and 2 of them are on the front. The LG V50 was launched at a hefty price of around $1200, including its second screen, but you can now get a more or less brand new one for around $300 and a little bit less if you go pre-owned, without a second screen though. So one of the best things about the LG V50 and especially about the LG phones are its audio centered features. So it comes with a Hi-Fi quad deck which has the ability to extract best quality audio from almost any sort of earphone. There is an option to turn on the DTSX surround audio which is like a cherry on top because that feature greatly enhances the overall listening experience. And from my experience, I can say that with LG V50 in your hand, you won't be worrying about your earphones quality because whether you have a cheap or expensive ones, it will sound great thanks to its dedicated digital to analog converter. And the story doesn't end with the listening experience alone. The sound recorder app also provides with plenty of manual controls. It has the custom recording option as well as the option to record in high quality flag format. In short, you can get professional audio quality with the LG V50. And that is the reason this phone could be a good option for content creators like myself. So the phone has three very capable cameras on the back as I have mentioned earlier. So the main camera is of 12 megapixels with an aperture of f1.5 and the 2x telephoto camera is of 12 megapixels with an aperture of f2.4 while the ultra wide angle camera is a 16 megapixel shooter with an aperture of f1.9. The picture quality of each of these cameras is decent, pictures are really sharp and nicely vivid but sometimes the HDR does not do a good job, it is mostly a hit or miss case and for most of the times it feels a bit weak. But in good light conditions, it takes nicely looking images and the low light performance is also very nice especially when you use the Pro mode. And I'm gonna show you some of the photos which I have captured using its Pro mode in the later part of this video. So let's talk about the video quality now. The phone has the capability to shoot 4K at 60 frames per second video. And the main and telephoto lens is also optically stabilized which is an amazing feature especially when you compare it to the similarly priced new budget range phones. You have the option to shoot in multiple formats and you also do have an option to capture manual video. Yes, unlike other brands, LG has been providing us with its manual video mode since LG V10 for its V series. And let me tell you that you can completely change the look of the video as per your requirements. And also with this feature you will have a complete control over the video quality. Like you can manually control the focus peaking, exposure controlling, you can also control the audio. Like you can control which mic you would like to use, either the external one or the built-in ones. So it is going to be a great tool for those who know how to take advantage of it. Now the V50's 2x telephoto lens is a plus point. It is optically stabilized and produces quite decent images but it is not really reliable in the low light conditions. And when you will compare it to its main lens, you will see a slight difference between the overall quality. But overall it's a good option. And the benefit of this lens is that when you zoom in up to 10x in the video, the video's quality would still look quite decent, both in terms of sharpness and stabilization compared to the digital zoom. This phone has also a feature known as Cine Video, which basically captures a raw video which you can edit as per your liking in post-production. The camera app has plenty of onboard presets to choose from, but you also get to have an option to apply either these filters or go fully raw. The point zoom option is also awesome and it looks really cool when properly used because it gives the video a cinematic look. So yeah, in the video department the LG V50 has a lot of nice features. And there is also an option of a portrait video. It is not as good as uh, some other brands but still it is nice to have at least that option. 
overall the video is quite nice for its price at which you can buy this phone at the moment but to be honest it sucks at maintaining the proper exposure throughout the video and in low light the graininess is quite visible so yeah these are some of my findings now back to the stills so LG V50 takes nice looking pictures but compared to the newer phones whether in budget or mid range segment it looks a bit washed out the newer budget phones usually come with a much more aggressive HDR which makes their photos look more appealing to the eyes but that does not mean the pictures of the LG V50 are bad it's decent but i think a more aggressive HDR could have done a justice to its hardware so when it comes to the night time photos just look at these photos these were taken at the night time and these are extraordinary results but it's quite difficult to capture shots like that because you will either be needing a tripod or very stable hands to capture shots like that otherwise the results would be a blur images and these photos were shot using the manual mode of the LG V50 and not with its built-in night sight option in the manual mode you get to see an option named as graphy that option gives you access to a lot of presets now on the front side it has two cameras one is a 8 megapixel standard camera while another one is a 5 megapixel ultra wide lens the image quality these cameras produce is good it's not an awesome phone for selfies but it does give you more than one selfie camera and video quality max out just up to 1080p now when it comes to the display the LG V50 has LG's own pre-OLED panel the screen size is 6.4 inches and its screen resolution is quad hd plus which has a ppi of 537 that makes it an extremely sharp display the content on this phone screen looks amazing it shows saturated colors and gets bright enough to be seen outdoors and the viewing angles are also amazing and there is also an option to customize the screen's colors as per your liking this one also has stereo speakers along with the boombox option but I think the speaker quality for me was not very impressive for a flagship phone like this one. Now one of the downside of this phone is that it won't be getting any future updates after Android 12, which will make this device a bit outdated when the Android 13 is released. The gaming performance of the LG V50 is also very good, the gyros are very fast and accurate and during the gameplay I haven't seen any kind of stuttering or lag issues. On paper, the LG V50 has an octa-core Snapdragon 855 chipset and an Adreno 640 GPU. It has a 6 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of UFS 2.1 storage. Design-wise, the LG V50 has a power button on the right side and volume buttons on the left side. And there is also a Google Assistant button below the volume keys. And it is not a remappable one. On the rear side, you can see a fingerprint sensor. The positioning of the fingerprint sensor is exactly as it should be on any phone. Your finger always sits naturally on it and there is very less hustle finding it. The unlocking speed is also reasonably fast and accurate. The rear glass of the LG V50 is black, glossy one and it's very hard to keep it clean all the time. The frame of the LG V50 is made up of aluminum and it is relatively a lighter phone compared to the similarly sized phones. On the bottom it has a 3.5mm audio jack, a microphone, a USB Type-C port and a loudspeaker. Other than that, the V50 is an IP68 water and dust resistant phone with military standard 810G compliance, which basically states that it is tested to survive in relatively more harsh conditions. The V50 has a 4000mAh battery and in my case it was very nice and it also supports 18 watts of fast charging. On average, the LG V50 charges up to 100% in about 1.5 hour. Also this phone has a tons of customization options. It has the always on display feature with plenty of styles and it also does support wireless charging and yes it also have a 5g support some other features of the lg v50 are its dual screen accessory support it has a nfc support compass barometer gyroscope boom box hard pipe card tag and a micro sd support up to terabytes from a security perspective it comes with a face unlock option and it also has a knock board feature and overall, I have found LG V50 a very good phone for those who like a phone with a lot of manual controls and customization options. And I think it is still a great device to buy, especially in comparison with the similarly priced phones. So yeah, that was pretty much it. Okay guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.